I'm gonna open this before I start. Hey guys, Justin here. So what are the odds of this? I'm back in my college parking lot again. I'm going back to AMC Garden State at the Garden State Plaza to go see the Super Mario Brothers movie. And this is obviously based off of Nintendo's Super Mario franchise, which got its start back in 1985 with the release of the Super Mario Brothers game on the Nintendo Famicom and the Nintendo Entertainment System here in the United States. And then ever since then, uh, Mario has just become super popular within the almost 40 years of its existence. Donkey Kong 2, I almost forgot about that. So, this movie is being produced by Universal Pictures, Nintendo, and Illumination Entertainment, which is most famous for the Minions movies. And the directors behind this are Aaron Horvath and Michael Zielinek. And this movie stars Chris Pratt, Anya Taylor-Joy, Charlie Day, Jack Black, Kegel Mike and Key, Seth Rogen, and Fred Armisen. What's funny about this is this isn't even the first movie that was based on the Super Mario Brothers franchise. Back in 1993, there was a movie that had John Leguizamo in it. That was called the Super Mario Brothers movie, but when it was adapted, it just... The reviews for it were just absolutely horrific. I haven't seen that movie in its entirety. I've just only seen bits and pieces of it throughout the years. Getting to see a fully animated Mario movie is something that 11 to 12 year old me would definitely be enjoying to see. Obviously now I'm 22, so... Now my 22-year-old self is going to be enjoying the heck out of this movie. This parking lot is always so packed. I'm glad I was able to get a decent spot towards the entrance. It's a me out of the movie theater. So you know how Mario gets his power-ups from the, those question block things? I've got mine right here. Now let's see what's in here. A burrito! So now before I start this review, I have some important matters to get to first. Just like Mario says, let's -a go. So this movie opens with Bowser destroying a kingdom in search of one of those star things that are in the video games. Then after that, we are introduced to Mario and Luigi. Mario and Luigi are struggling plumbers in Brooklyn, New York, and their family has doubt in them if their business is actually going to be successful, which really brings them down. While at home, they discover a plumbing issue in Brooklyn, and they go to check it out, and then they come to find a network of mysterious pipes. One of them sucks Luigi into a void, and Mario follows to find him. They get separated, with Mario ending up in the Mushroom Kingdom, befriending Toad, and Luigi transporting to a place called the Darklands, with him captured by Bowser. Mario and Toad go to seek Princess Peach, who is already in search to take down Bowser. And she suggests to get the Kong army to help them out. So Toad, Mario, and Peach travel to the Jungle Kingdom, and they meet Cranky Kong, which is actually his dad. So, Cranky Kong refuses to help unless Mario is able to defeat his son, Donkey Kong. Mario is being beat, but he receives a power-up that makes him turn into a cat while fighting Donkey Kong. And then he eventually defeats him. And honestly, in the sequence, <laughs> Seth Rogen's voice, like, I would have thought that it would have taken me out of the experience, but honestly, it just made it so much funnier. The Kong army and the others build carts in order to reach Bowser for a battle. And in a uh, Mario Kart-like sequence, they drive on Rainbow Road. They get ambushed by Bowser's army, with DK and Mario becoming lost inside a whale once they get hurled off the track. So while they're looking for a way to escape, Toad and Peach are visited by Bowser. And Bowser has really wanted to marry Princess Peach because... why not? And he threatens to kill Toad if she doesn't. And then she's like, oh no, 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 please don't. And then she obliges. So then DK and Mario actually discover a way out of the whale that they ended up inside of, and they make their way to the wedding reception for Peach and Bowser. So Peach, during the vows, discovers that all of the prisoners that Bowser has taken in from the uh, kingdom that was destroyed at the very beginning of the movie, and Luigi included, were all going to be sacrificed in this lava pit. Then Peach fights back with ice powers that she receives from uh, the, one of those blue flowers, and then Toad, DK 
and Mario, they come to fight too. But when Bowser releases a uh, bonsai bill, which is one of those like black rocket things that you see in Mario Kart, and Mario leads that bonsai bill to a pipe where he came in from, and it transports everything in the Mushroom Kingdom world into Brooklyn. So ev literally everything just get like sucked into a void, like in Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantum Mania, and then they all get spit back out towards Brooklyn. Obviously no Quantum Realm here. <laughs> and Bowser is coming to search for Mario, Luigi, and everybody else that has uh, not respected his authority. So while Mario is defeated, he's motivated by uh, his brother to keep going on. And then eventually he find. and then eventually somebody's dressed like Mario. That is so funny. <laughs> so then Mario finds Luigi and then the both of them together team up and they get one of those superstar things that makes you invincible. And with the powers of this superstar, they're able to fight off Bowser. And with that, Mario and Luigi and everybody else were able to save the day. And the parents come back in for a quick moment to say, wow, I'm so proud of you guys. Great job. And then the dad, a stereotypical Italian-American dad, he was like, hey, good job, boys. And so Mario and Luigi decide to stay in the Mushroom Kingdom in order to continue to keep the kingdom safe, which I think would be set up for a sequel. And that's the entire plot. It was much shorter than I was anticipating. But the runtime was only like an hour and a half, so it kind of makes sense. In the mid-credits scene, before the movie entirely ends, Bowser is singing a song about Peach, but is silenced by one of the guards in Peach's castle. I thought that was pretty funny. Then, after the credits were finished, inside of a sewer, Yoshi's shell appears, and it starts to slowly crack, but then it fades to black before you can actually see him. And that's the movie. So, what I found pretty interesting about this is I haven't seen an animated movie like this in theaters in forever. So this was pretty interesting to uh, get back into that um, sphere. That's the best way I can think to say it. Some surprises that I found pretty interesting were Bowser singing at certain parts with him being voiced by Jack Black and Jack Black being part of Tenacious D. Like he he's already known for singing, but I found it funny that his singing was included in this movie. It really brought a different element to the Bowser character instead of just being like, er, I'm a big bad guy. Like you could actually kind of tell he was a little bit of a dork, but he tried to keep that. He tried to keep that hidden to keep up that that tough guy persona. Speaking of tough guy, Chris Pratt's Brooklyn accent was actually kind of decent. I was just expecting him to talk straight, like without really sort of any exaggerated Italian American accent, like uh, the original voice actor for Mario is known for, but it was just faint enough where you can tell, oh, this is a Mario character. Like instead of talking like this, like he kind of, uh, he kind of put a little bit more energy into it. If you were to meet someone who lived in Brooklyn for the entire life, you could kind of get a sense of that. I grew up in New Jersey, so I wouldn't know anything about that. So the thematic feel of this movie was really fun and I was honestly expecting that because uh illumination movies are already are all pretty much super lighthearted in their tone and really don't deviate too much from that and it was very colorful like there were so many colors popping out it went out throughout the entire movie and it was also pretty funny I found it interesting the music choices that they had they had licensed music that was popular around the early to mid 1980s kind of worked for it because I'm guessing many of the people who were involved with making this movie had grew up around that era and especially with Super Mario it was just full-on 80s it really fit in with the theme of everything going on and there were also uh, orchestral arrangements of music from the Super Mario games which I also thought was pretty interesting because honestly in a movie you kind of have to have those uh, orchestral arrangements in order to a uh, make people be like, I know that song, but now it sounds big. Some critiques that I do have for this is uh, Anya Taylor-Joy, she voiced Peach, but uh, Anya Taylor-Joy is originally a British actress. Her American accent, while well, it is very convincing, some of the syllables that were pronounced just didn't sound the most natural in what I personally am used to hearing for like uh, a generalized American accent, because you can tell that not every single syllable is pronounced to a T. 
sometimes there's a blending of words yeah that's just a, that's just a that's just a personal thing that kind of bugs me and kind of took me out of it a little i still think anya taylor joy is a really good actress it's just with this performance specifically i just i just noticed that at a, before anything else with that being said the character development didn't really seem like the highest priority in this movie they did definitely have a couple of character moments just to show it's not like a one-dimensional version of mario luigi toad bowser and peach a lot of them did seem to have a clear motivation of like who they were and how they interacted with other people and not falling too much into stereotypes that would be associated with their characters it wasn't terrible but with all the criticisms that i have for this i don't think it's terrible believe me there's far worse out there the 1993 Mario movie, although I haven't seen it, I've heard is not good. Not good at all. Honestly, I prefer this much more than whatever that was. I think this is definitely very entertaining for younger children. If this movie came out when I was like probably 7 to 12 years old, I definitely would have consumed this movie quite a lot. And it doesn't have any like high stakes craziness that a lot of other animated movies have had or action movies. This isn't really action, but it's like fantastical. Not not even like Dungeons and Dragons. Like this is an entirely different. It almost felt like playing a Mario game, but instead of you physically playing it, you're just watching it happen on screen. It kind of reminds me of the super mario brothers super show which was an animated cartoon show that i believe was around in the 90s and i used to watch it quite a lot with a couple of my friends when i was younger and it had those weird live action sequences too in addition to the cartoon version it's very interesting to have seen it this way because having known what illumination entertainment kind of does with their movies they almost kind of follow a formula in a way, which isn't terrible. If you're the type of person who goes into a movie and expecting every single movie that you watch to make you think and question your own existence in life, this really isn't for those people. But for those who like to enjoy silly little adventures that aren't too provocative or crazy, this is, this is definitely... One that you can put on with your family and be like, hey, this is a good choice. I'm glad I chose this. My family's gonna love this. All of that being said, I give this movie a solid three out of five. It does what it's supposed to in a really good way, but it could have had some more development to make it seem a lot more catering to both adults and children and not just strictly stay with the children because obviously a lot of the fan base for Mario is children, but also the people that grew up playing the games in the 1980s. It would have been interesting to see a bit more of a balance go between trying to combine the feelings that both of those demographics would enjoy to see on screen. But with that, that's all I really got to say about this. I thought it was pretty interesting that I was here last week seeing Dungeons and Dragons, and now I'm back here this week seeing Mario. I didn't expect 2023 to be so stacked with new releases, but here we are. Hope to have some more in the future. And with that, this was a recap and review. I'd like to thank you for watching this. And if you want to uh, check out any, if you want to check out any more stuff that I do, you can go to jshamedia.com, subscribe to this channel, interact any way you can. Thanks for watching.